Uh, for the last two years, we've been working on a rather large project called Strategy for the Long Haul, which is uh, sponsored by a number of foundations, and it's designed to give the, the new administration, the Obama administration, kind of a, a point of departure uh, for uh, their defense review, uh, typically called the Quadrennial Defense Review. Uh, so that, uh, that required us to do a, a diagnosis of where things are going, and, and that kind of dovetails into, okay, what, what kind of problems is Obama uh, going to be looking at uh, near term and long term. There are a number of longer term problems that really uh, came into focus when we began to look at security trends. And I'll just go through them very quickly, uh, sort of the big problems. Uh, one big problem that we see is that uh, we're looking at an increasingly disordered world. Uh, a world where the danger of failed and failing states is growing. And if you look at what's behind that, uh, you look at, uh, for example, demographic trends. And I didn't think when I first went to CSBA be looking at demography. Uh, but when you look at it, there are a number of unprecedented trends going on in the world right now. Uh, in particular, there's an enormous youth bulge uh, in, in major parts of the third world. All of Africa, much of the Middle East. Uh, they're going to be trying to get employment, trying to get uh, a life, if you will, uh, in, in a global economy uh, where young, God bless you, people in sub-Saharan Africa, for example, have to compete with people in, in India and in Singapore and Japan, the United States, uh, for jobs, uh, for employment. Uh, and in those circumstances, uh, when you're looking at a lot of these countries, they're incompetent governments, corrupt governments, uh, you know, a lot of uh, corruption. Uh, and uh, when you combine that uh, with that, uh, that surge in the number of people looking for employment, uh, you can see that there are going to be a lot of frustrated uh, people in the world. Uh, and they're going to know they're, uh, they're disadvantaged. Uh, the communications revolution uh, really is... Uh, is informing them in ways that were unimaginable just 10 or 15 years ago in large parts of, of the third world. Uh, and so when you think of a country like Nigeria, 130, 140 million people, 1% of that population alienated, what about 1.4 million people? Uh, can they be recruited into radical organizations? Uh, and when you're looking at radical organizations these days, you know, increasing uh, <laughs> ability uh, to use uh, modern technology for destructive purposes, uh, whether it's uh, uh, cyber warfare, uh, what we saw in the second Lebanon war with, uh, uh, with Hezbollah uh, firing 4,000 rockets into Israel, an irregular warfare force, uh, and of course the concerns about non-state entities getting access to weapons of mass destruction. Uh, second, we looked at the, uh, the challenge of a rising China. Uh, not that China is inevitably an enemy of the United States, uh, but the fact that uh, you know, rising states uh, typically cause perturbations uh, in the international system. And China is doing uh, two things that rising states typically have done throughout history. Uh, one is as they, they gather economic and political strength, they're expanding their defense perimeter. Uh, and the political scientists will tell you that's creating a security dilemma. As China can looks to push its security uh, perimeter out, uh, through capabilities uh, which are uh, known as Assassin's Mace or Sashi Zhuan uh, in China. Uh, the, the theme, uh, the bumper sticker here is the inferior defeat the superior, uh, the Chinese defeat the Americans. And the idea is how to make it increasingly difficult for the United States to operate in East Asia in a military sense. Uh, and to borrow sort of a schoolyard phrase, the, the attitude of the inferior power is if, if I can't have it, you can't have it either. <laughs> Uh, the United States has enjoyed essentially unfettered access to the global commons since the end of the Cold War. Uh, that's great for us, uh, but for other countries, particularly China, that worries about their security, is concerned about the United States, uh, that represents a potential threat to them, especially as their needs uh, for foreign resources uh, become more and more acute. Uh, now the number two importer of oil uh, projected to be number one uh, by some accounts uh, over the next 20 years. Uh, certainly a voracious consumer of raw materials, uh, you know, everything from copper uh, to oil, natural gas, as I mentioned, and so on. But the, you know, the concern there is, you know, how, do you, uh, how do you deal? Some people say, how do you manage? But I don't think this is a case of management. How do you maintain a stable military balance so that the, the Chinese uh, 
uh, feel reasonably secure, feel that they can advance their interests best through uh, you know, sort of legitimate international norms uh, and, and organizations, uh, and not be tempted to rely more on coercion uh, or even aggression uh, to achieve their aims. So it's it's uh, you know it's it's an increasingly disordered world, a world uh, where you have a rising China. Uh, and thirdly, uh, the, uh, the, the other thing that uh, really struck us is an increasingly proliferated world. And I think, particularly with this administration, President Obama uh, has, uh, at least in theory, signed up to the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Uh, we need to identify ways uh, to get ourselves on the road to zero nuclear weapons. Uh, there are great concerns, not only with North Korea, uh, but Iran. Uh, and I would say the, the concern about Iran and nuclear weapons uh, is, is profound. Uh, there are six Arab countries uh, that have said, look, uh, we're interested in peaceful nuclear <laughs> development. Uh, Partly uh, because of rising energy prices, but partly you, you get a sense that there's an attitude if there's going to be a Shia Persian bomb, uh, there's going to be a Sunni Arab bomb. And oh, by the way, there's probably going to be a Turk bomb as well. Uh, and so if the Iranians do get nuclear weapons, uh, if, you, if you're a strategist like myself, you begin to sit down and you say, well, where does this lead? Do the Egyptians get the bomb? Do the Saudis get the bomb? Uh, do the Turks, do the Algerians? Uh, you get a multipolar regional nuclear competition. Uh, we haven't done a lot of thinking about this kind of world. We haven't done a lot of thinking about how you deter people from using these kinds of weapons. Uh, we haven't done a lot of thinking about where well, you've got the Israelis here, the Sunni Arabs here, the Persian Shia here, the Turks over there. Uh, what kind of a stable balance uh, can you create? What about outside actors? The uh, U.S. Uh, provides missile defense, doesn't provide missile defense. Oh, by the way, somebody <laughs> says, the Saudis have, have given uh, a substantial amount of funding support to the Pakistanis. Uh, after the Iranians get the bomb, all of a sudden we find Pakistani nuclear weapons in Saudi Arabia. So we have a series of studies uh, under this long haul effort uh, that, that essentially uh, have, have arrived at this kind of a diagnosis of some of the big challenges we faced sort of, uh, uh, you know, the day after tomorrow. Uh, and uh, just as we found you can't let uh, certain problems fester, they come back to bite you. Uh, some people argue that we've been at war with radical Islamist groups since the late 1970s and the Iranian Revolution, 1980s, uh, you know, the whole situation in Lebanon and the Middle East. Uh, you know, the, the Marine Corps barracks and so on, the 1990s uh, in, in Somalia, uh, in uh, Kobar Towers and so on, the attack, the initial attack on the World Trade Center. Uh, you can't really, you can ignore these problems, but you do it at your risk. And so the challenge for President Obama in a very uh, difficult environment is going to be how does he sort of uh, deal with today's problems while at the same time uh, hedging or trying to prevent uh, these other problems from emerging or getting out of control.